so today we're going to start doing things that electrical engineers do. And one of the things that they need to know about are electrical circuits. So, what is a circuit? The uh, bulb. The bulb. And? Or the holder. Yes, you're correct. Both the battery and, and the, the bulb. Wires. And then we had the wires. Okay. Why is it important that it's touching two parts of the bulb? Um, because, uh, so that it can become a circuit? So that it can become a circuit. Okay, so that it can enter through one way and come out the other. So right now, is it an open or closed circuit? Open. 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 open, right? When it's open, you can't complete the circuit because there's a gap, there's a space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give each group a bag. And what I would like for your group to do is to complete the circuit. Yep, go ahead and get started, guys. Yes! Oh, victory! Yeah. Victory! So this to the battery and then the other ones to the light. So basically it's just going through the wire, giving power to the light, and that and then power going, and then the tries power to get back more power. Power. It's going all around. Alright. The next thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do is to draw your circuit so that, oh. so that somebody else might be able to recreate it. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, what do you notice is similar about all of these drawings, Stacy? They all have the battery. They all have the battery. Do all of the batteries look exactly the same? No. 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 Imagine if this didn't have those labels. If we didn't have those labels and you handed it to someone else and said, can you please tell me what this is? They might not be able to tell you that it was a battery, okay? Because everybody's batteries looked a little bit different. What can electricians and electrical engineers do so that they can make sure that anybody can read their their plan? Back to Emily and Pete in a reminder for Emily. Madison? A schematic diagram. I'm going to give you a copy of symbols that electrical engineers use for their schematic diagram. Okay? On one side, it, showed, it drew a picture like how you did on your diagrams, and on the other side, it shows you the symbol that they use in a schematic diagram. Okay. So then you're basically just gonna put whatever it here and then the symbols. So like this is the light bulb and then this is the battery. So all you're gonna do is just put light bulbs and batteries on what it says here. Get it? In this part of this lesson, besides the wires and the light bulb and the battery, we're gonna also throw in a switch. And so what's gonna move are is this this little lever right here. Okay, right now, is it open or closed? Open. The switch. Open. open. How do I close it? Move the switch. Okay, so this moves toward the smaller one, and you need to make sure that they're touching. Why is it important that they're touching? Because if they're not touch touching, then, it, then it's gonna be open and the electricity won't be moving. Okay, let me show you what it would look like as a schematic diagram. This is the symbol for an open switch. Okay, you're gonna build this circuit. All right, guys, how are we gonna check and make sure that we, we built our circuit correctly? Close. Close the circuit. It's connected. It's because, yeah, the circuit's complete. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Look, we only need one wire if we connect these two. Come on. Wait, where's the oh. You guys are so creative. Circle. Goes through there, goes up there. Okay. So the guiding question for this lesson was 
How can sch schematic diagrams be used to communicate information about different electrical circuits? Why do you think that electrical engineers use the schematic diagram instead of drawing pictures like we did to begin with? Why should they know the language of schematic diagrams? Antonio? It'll be easier for people to know what, what's what. So that it'll be easier for people to know what's what. And do you think that an electrical engineer from China would be able to read a schematic diagram that an electrical engineer from Italy drew? Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Why? Because they all use the same, the same symbols. Okay. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys take a look at your worksheet from earlier. You had this on one side, which you completed the schematic diagram for. If you turn it over to the other side, there's a quick little activity for you to do with your group. So basically, you're going to look at each schematic diagram, and you're going to decide whether it is going to light or not. If you think that it is going to light, then you will circle it. If you think that it's not going to light, okay? then you're going to put an X through it, okay? If you put an X through it, you also have to explain what you need to do in order to make the bulb light. The reason why that one doesn't connect is because it needs more wire. And you have to have something to charge the circuit, yeah. like a battery. I want to quickly go over this, so please make sure that it's still out. The first one with the two bulbs. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think? Because there's no gas, but there is a but there is a power source in it. Okay. This has a power source, and there aren't any gaps anywhere in the diagram or in our circuit. What about the one next to it? Everybody. No. 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 Why not, Kevin? It doesn't have a power source. There's no power source, okay? No so to say no, you should have put an X over it and said it needs a power source. Okay, awesome job. I really liked lesson three. I think that the kids did enjoy creating the schematic diagrams and I think that the schematic diagrams also helped take away any confusion that the students might have if they had just drawn it the way they thought that a battery might look in real life. I think that it made it easy for them to understand.